Who we are getting close to the end. Today is episode six of the HBO original series, 30 Coins. It's called Guerra Santa or Holy War. Now, just as a warning, this will have some spoilers from previous episodes, and I've linked spoiler-free reviews of the previous episodes in the description below if you need them. Episode 5 saw Father Vergara still in Rome. He's a prisoner of Santoro, and he's being held captive in catacombs below a castle. Santoro and his followers dress in the chromatic opposite of standard priests. They've got white clothes and a black collar. Before trying to get Vergara to join the ranks, Santoro shows him several things that they are working on, including the Gospel of Jesus and the scrolls from the Magi that contain magical spells. And Santoro hopes to impress and woo Vergara with the prospect of this power. I really think that Santoro believes that Vergara will be impressed by the exact same things he is, that he has the same desires as well. In an effort to save Regara, Sandro goes to the castle, but he ends up getting the wrath and the power of Santoro. And we witness how Santoro has these supernatural powers now. He's not only lifting Sandro up into the air, but then he's able to change a wounded guard into a nasty bulbous spider-like creature that then chases Sandro and Vergara. They have this gnarly fight and Sandro ends up being killed by the monster. And Vergara then kills that monster with the spear that pierced Jesus' side on the cross and then Vergara escapes. Meanwhile, while back in the village, Elena and her husband are reconnecting, but Jesus is going mad because it's revealed he killed Elena's husband and buried him two years earlier. So this fake husband forces Elena to the dam to find the coin, and luckily Paco and Lagunas show up to save her, and then the fake husband disintegrates because he was really just a scarecrow filled with leaves and dirt all along. And at the very end of the episode, Roque is in Paris with a friend at a seafood restaurant. And as a fish is being opened up at the table, the chef finds the coin inside, which then Roque takes, which means the coin is no longer lost and is going to be trying to find its way back to Elena like she was told it would. So episode six is Guerra Santa, or Holy War. The action and suspense are continuing to ramp up, and Vergara hasn't escaped Rome, but he's not necessarily safe. I love in this episode he's wearing a flannel shirt the entire time, and I knew I liked him for some reason. There's an interesting situation too with Vergara. He's finding himself in a new complication, and the situation that he's in isn't stable, but the conversations that arise are pretty intriguing. I mean, there's this hostility that he encounters, some due to locale, but what we don't know yet is if it's also the workings of Santoro. Paco has been visibly deteriorating emotionally over the last few episodes, and it begins to come to a head in this one. And he's finally finding his voice and a backbone to say what he feels, but not all of it. I mean, he's just beginning to do so. We're also beginning to see a man in Paco seemingly at the end of his rope. I mean, he's reaching his breaking point, and I'm really curious at what the ramifications are going to be when he finally does break. Because you figure he's been emotionally all over the place the last few episodes, and really, I mean, come on, throughout most of the show. So is he even going to be somebody that can be counted on when that time comes? And honestly, I'm not really convinced he will be. I mean, I like that he shows up, especially where Elena is concerned, but then he's also so temperamental that I can't put too much faith in him. And while Paco is unraveling a bit at home, Elena has traveled to Paris to spend some time with Roque, and she looks genuinely happy, finally. I mean, especially to be away from the town and the coin, at least as far as she knows. We have the addition of now two federal law enforcement agents who come into the town to investigate and speak with Lagunas. There has been a massive increase in murders, suicides, attacks, and other junk, which is way out of the normal for the small town. And of course, that's going to raise some flags. Luckily, though, Laguna seems a bit relieved to have some of this support in dealing with all the oddities. Now, the agents haven't had enough time on screen to grow on me yet. And they may not even play much of a large part as we reach the finale. We're just going to have to wait and see how they come into play. We are also continuing to see more of Santoro's power, but he's still operating in the shadows in the background. I mean, he is working and we get to observe how he functions and how he's able to exert so much control from so far away. I like that. And I like that the episodes go back and forth with the craziness too. I mean, we've had the spider baby, then the mirror, and then that glob guy monster from the last episode, but not every episode has had those off the wall things. This one is more emotionally intense. The drama and the conflict is being driven by the characters, not the creatures. And I like the ebb and flow aspect of that. We're now watching a ramping up of tensions. I mean, relationships are reaching breaking points, much like what we've been seeing with Paco. And now a new threat is coming. And I know that they've been building, but as each minute passes, the pressure seems to increase exponentially. 
The cinematography continues to be good. I'm loving the shot choices because it fluctuates between the intimate framings where we're right up in the character's face to see the nuances of their emotions, but also where we get some wonderful wide shots to show grandeur or even make us feel small. There's one scene that takes place in a bodega in this episode, and I love the top-down aerial shot they use. It's not necessarily a unique type of scene, but because of the circumstances, it provides some difference to other sequences, which makes it really enjoyable. Antonio is back in this episode, and I like his character, but I really wish we got to see more of him. He only appears in small blips, and even though he's somewhat key to certain things because he has an insight, or maybe it's because he's being communicated to by Santoro or the shadowy figures, he should have a little more prominence. I mean, maybe in the final two episodes, he's going to play a larger role, but he starts the series off with such a bang, and then he disappears way into the background. This show messes with its characters a lot. Each time they may begin to feel just the slightest bit of reprieve or even rest, something else happens. And I know this is certainly by design because it keeps us invested in the characters, but you've also got to feel a little bad for them too. Just like the other episodes, this one is just about an hour in length. And it really flew by. I mean, I was actually shocked when it ended. And I, I think it's great that I didn't feel the time, but it also makes me a bit sad that we're just about at the end. I mean, they are making great use of the time, especially in this episode, because we've got four storylines taking place concurrently, and they don't feel disjointed or even out of place. I really hope we're going to see all of our characters converge back together for the battle that I think is coming. I mean, their dynamic is strained and it's weird, but I think together they're going to be better. I'm also hopeful that we get to see some real fight from Santoro. I mean, it feels like we're getting ready for the showdown of good versus evil. And for that, I'm really expecting huge things. I mean, come on, you better bring it. As much as I enjoyed this episode, I don't think it was as strong or exciting as the last couple have been. The character drama is great to watch and we continue to see characters develop, but on the whole, this one just wasn't as spellbinding. Now that doesn't mean I'm not super excited for next week though. There is sex, nudity, profanity, and violence. I give episode six, Holy War, three and a half out of five couches. So what have been some of your favorite moments so far? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.